Hey there and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a really exciting haul, a haul that has been many months in the making and was drama filled and all that jazz. So we're gonna get into it. If you haven't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram so you'll get to see all the behind the scenes stuff, including why this haul is so anticipated and yeah we're just gonna get straight into it there's three fragrances i'm gonna leave the most drama filled one um for last and what's surprising and interesting about this haul which has never happened on my channel before a first time occurrence is all three of these are not blind buys they're all fragrances where i have either sampled or smelled the scent um, prior and knew exactly pretty much what I was gonna get uh, when I got it so that is rare for me as you guys will know if you've been watching my channel I might have one or two in a haul every once in a while but never an entire haul so look at me learning um, but yeah this probably won't happen very often but yeah we're gonna get into it I'm gonna start with the one that I actually just bought straight from Lush. And that is another one of these body sprays. You guys know, I have them right here. I have like five or six, I can't see, already. And uh, I went, I recently was in a Lush store and I check, like I always do, to see if they have any scents that I haven't picked up uh, that I'd want. And they had Big, which I love the Big shampoo. I'd used it for years and years, um, you know, like on and off. And while it is a bit drying because of all the sea salt, it's nice for days where I leave my hair natural, which are few and far in between because I have wavy hair and I do use heat on it quite a bit, but it kind of has like a built-in sea salt spray vibe to it. So I love the scent of that product and that's why I knew what this was gonna smell like even though I'd never tried the big body spray um, as you know a product in and of itself they are very authentic these lush sprays so they always smell exactly like what product the scent is from and I've gotten a whole bunch of them as I say I think I even I've done a video on the ones that I had a while ago um, I picked up more ever since there was also dirty uh, in store but I don't like uh, that scent it's just kind of like a toothpaste minty scent it's not a fragrance that I would want to wear, so I haven't picked it up. But this one, we will unlock. Uh, it just listed four notes, orange flower, mandarin, vanilla, and salt. I'm gonna spray it on the back of my hand here um, because I know from experience these are very strong and they have a lot of sillage. Oh, wow, and it, it does, it smells exactly like the shampoo, which I love. I would say um, the mandarin in this is slightly stronger than in the shampoo, but with Lush products, you'll find um, because they're handmade, sometimes you'll get a pro like it obviously smells the same, but sometimes it'll smell a little bit stronger. And you know, you get to see well, actually, this one doesn't have it, but um, before they used to have stickers where you'd see like the photo of the person who'd made it, now it just says uh, their name. I guess that's a, that's a change, but yeah, it does like it has a little bit of that slight variance and on and on my skin right now, this one is a little bit more mandarin heavy than I'm remembering the shampoo to be. But I mean, it's pretty much that it's floral and like vibrant and fresh and definitely salty. Um, it's got like that same, I was wondering if it would have that saltiness to it because the big shampoo um, smells salty because there's huge coarse salt throughout the entire thing. It's a very thick shampoo and it kind of exfoliates the scalp, the scalp um, because it's such coarse salt and I love that about it as well. It can also just fall down um, on your shower and it's harder to use, but I, I do really like it. Yeah, I love this scent. I'm definitely gonna be wearing it. I can kind of already figure that it's going to be long lasting and have incredible sillage. 
I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to be even nicer uh, than some of the others with the sillage because it just lends itself so, I don't, it's already kind of airy and not beachy, but like it's sea salt and and vibrant. So I feel like it's going to be a really nice one. So yeah, that is Baked by Lush. All right, so now we get to the other two and the other two are from Fragrance By. And the first one I'm going to go with is a fragrance that I have liked in theory for many many years and i tried it so many years ago like i can't even count and i would try it in store in sephora and then i never picked it up and i'm pretty sure this is the one i liked um so i have tried it before and i'm pretty sure this is it this is stella by stella mccartney i believe it's discontinued now i might be wrong but i believe it is because i haven't seen it in sephora in ages but the thing that confuses me um, that I'm not sure of is when I first tried it, it was like, I definitely tried this bottle. But then I remember Stella McCartney came out with like these little bottles that were kind of, I don't even know how to explain it. They were like shorter and kind of like a rounded square. And that's the one I remember trying so often um, in Sephora when it come out and I thought that it was this one now having purchased it. I might be wrong. I really should have looked into that. But regardless, I saw this one and I've been wanting to get Stella by Stella McCartney to try it out and see if that's what I was actually in love with or if this is just another one of her fragrances. And the notes are rose, oil, rose, peony, tangerine, and amber. So I feel like I'm gonna like it regardless. It's sweet actually. She has like her signature um, on the box when you open it, which is really nice. So yeah, I do remember this bottle. I'm just wondering if those shorter ones were just limited edition bottles with the same scent. I kind of hate when fragrance houses do that. I might be in the minority, but I don't like limited edition bottles just for the sake of the bottle. Um, because I find people get confused and it's like, I think just a money grab, um, which it, I mean, it is. So just release a new scent or leave it in the original bottle. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely, let me spray a little bit more. I feel like big is so strong of a scent. Okay. I definitely think it's possible that this is that scent that I liked. This is a really... Um, like musky rose and I know musk isn't in the notes but it lends itself to being already slightly powdery which I love it's reminding me a little bit of um, of one of the Nirvanas and not even the rose like I feel like it's reminding me a little bit of Nirvana black by Elizabeth and James yeah, I don't know why, but it's re it's reminding me of Nirvana Black by Elizabeth and James. And specifically, even so, even more specifically, the dry shampoo, uh, because it's like it's got that powderiness or that muskiness to it. Very rosy, kind of rose peony. And yeah, it smells very much like that, actually, the the white or the black. Now I'm confusing them because I have pretty much all of the Elizabeth and James dry shampoo. So I'm wondering if it's the white or the black, but it does. It reminds me of that. It is nice. I'm definitely going to wear it. I love th this scent because I love the way it smells in my hair when I use those dry shampoos and they're like beast mode in terms of the volume that they give. And I think they're discontinued now too, because I got them on clearance ages ago and I just go through them so slowly because I rarely use them and they have a very strong white cast, but they work incredibly well and they have a lot of um, volume to them. All that to say is this smells very similar to that because it's kind of musky and it's really, really reminding me of it. So I do like it. I have to look up and see if this is the one that I did actually like and just came in different packaging, but I'm glad to have picked it up and it was very inexpensive actually. And then finally we get to the last one. So the fragrance in question that has all this drama surrounding it where I was so excited 
is Lune Féline by Atelier des Arts. So this, my God, you guys probably know the story, but if you don't know, this is a short recap. Months ago, I was going to get my first Atelier des Arts and I decided it was gonna be Lune Féline because I got a sample and I fell in, I'd fallen in love with it because of that sample. And this wasn't the one I was going to get originally, but because of that sample, I completely changed my mind. It's a vanilla, like cardamom, cinnamon fragrance. Based on the notes, I wouldn't have gone this way because it's got cardamom, cinnamon, pink pepper, ambergris, woodsy nose, steric, cedar, green notes, vanilla, peru balsam, and musk. And it just, there were definitely others that spoke to me more, but the sample convinced me. Totally fell in love. And I put it in my cart with a bunch of other fragrances. And then when I went to order, I thought I'd ordered, but I'd accidentally removed it from my cart. And then it was, you know, it didn't arrive and I was really confused, but then I saw it was my own fault and it was sold out for ages. And I'd started my no buy this year and I, I promised myself this was gonna be the fragrance that if I was gonna cheat, I would cheat on. Now we can see that I've obviously cheated way more times than this. Regardless, I kept an eye out and I saw it was for sale. I mean, by the time this video goes up, it will have been several weeks because I have so many hauls um, to be uploaded, but I saw it was online. I was so excited. I ordered it in, you know, at the same time as this and I'd gotten big, you know, around the same day and I was so excited and then it did not arrive. Like it said delivered, it did not arrive. I thought it was stolen. I thought it was lost. Long story short, the driver, I posted about it everywhere because I was heartbroken and I'm like, I'm just, this is like cursed. Like this cannot arrive to me. And in those two days between, you know, order and delivery, I'd used my entire sample because I'm like, now I don't need to ration it. I'm just going to enjoy it. Um, so I had like maybe two sprays, maybe one spray left in that sample. So anyways, the driver thankfully had just lost it himself and found it and delivered it later that day. So here she is. I have not even opened it yet, even though I know what the scent smells like, obviously, because uh, I just wanted to open with you guys since I've talked about it so much and I've wanted it for so long and I'm having horrible technical difficulties trying to get it out. But as is the way, I feel like it's almost here and it just had to trouble me one last time. But there we go. Okay. The box is beautiful. Um, I, this isn't actually my first Atelier des Arts because I ended up getting uh, another one a couple months ago when I found out that this one left my cart. Oh my God, this is so hard to open. Okay. But I know I'm gonna like this one more than the other fragrance I have from this house because it's not a blind buy. And here she is finally, what a stunner with all her gold flecks. She's a beauty. Okay, so let's spray. I mean, I know what she's gonna smell like, but let's spray together. <sighs> wow, I love this fragrance. It is very quickly, and I don't wanna make this claim yet, but I'd always said that Dior Addict is my favorite vanilla because I'm not a vanilla person, but I'm trying to be, or at least more of a vanilla person. Because if I'm gonna like a vanilla, I like a stronger one, like a bourbon one or a rich one with a spicy one. Like it's, it's or, a very, or a very, very sweet kind of like, I don't know, um, almost like plasticky vanilla cake thing. It's, it's that middle ground I have a hard time with. It's hard to explain. But this gives Dior Addict a run for its money because I'm not gonna claim that it's my favorite yet because I just got the bottle and samples are different than bottles and you never know. But I love this fragrance. I absolutely love this fragrance. I feel like it's not a safe blind buy because I don't think any Atelier des Arts is, is a safe blind buy, to be quite honest. Not just because of the price, because there's many expensive fragrances that I feel like are safe and vice versa, cheaper fragrances that I think aren't safe, blind buys, 
but these are just hard to place with the notes I find and they're they're divisive um, just like homage I, I don't think homage is a safe blind buy either and neither of my two homages were um, blind buys were they oh no one was and one wasn't the same with Atelier des Elles. one was and one wasn't and honestly the one I blind bought in both cases was the worst one so I, I just feel like with those houses you do have to sample um, or get a decant because you just never know but in my case I'm so glad I sampled this and I'm so glad that she's finally in my collection. And because of that, I mean, if I were to put them in order, I would say 100% Lune Feline in number uh, one place. I would put, whoops, I would put Big in number two and I would put Stella in, in third place. She's nice, but she really does smell like those dry shampoos. So it's kind of throwing me off a little bit. So yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.